Were our hearts not burning within us? Amen. Who is walking along with you unrecognized? It has been a very tense election season, culminating in this week, a week when there have been more new coronaviruses in the United States than any other week. And last night we got a terrible phone call. One of my wife's classmates from high school had died of COVID, Jason Kim. And we are all carrying a terribly heavy burden. Our way of life, things that we thought we depended on, they're gone. But today we gather for our annual requiem service. And it's a requiem service for all those who we love who've died. And this year, it's for all those around the world who've died of COVID. The situation feels far worse because we cannot mourn in the way that we're accustomed to. There's no full men and boys choir here or orchestra to sweep us away in their music. You may not be able to see the play of the light as it comes in through the stained glass windows and scatters across the floor of the labyrinth. You cannot smell the warm, fresh-baked bread that I'm accustomed to share with you. In this place, in these actions, through invocation and hospitality, we become accustomed to realizing the presence of Jesus and our lives feel diminished without this experience. And yet, here we are, together. We still gather and somehow the spirit of Jesus is present in a way that is new, always new. I find it stunning that the whole gospel of Luke builds to a climax and then completely surprises us. In the story, Jesus could have appeared anywhere for the first time after his death. He could have shown himself on the Mount of Olives, which is where the Messiah was rumored to, to go. He could have gone to the temple. He could have been in the palaces of Pilate and Herod. But instead, Jesus chooses to appear on a dusty road a few miles outside of Jerusalem on the way to a town called Emmaus that is so obscure that archaeologists don't even know where it is. It would be like Jesus Christ appearing to us on the road to Turlock, California. Similarly, Jesus could have appeared to anyone, to his best friend Peter, to his mother Mary, to his friends and disciples, or to the leading religious authorities, or even the Roman emperor. But instead, he appears to two people who are so obscure that one is mentioned only once in the entire Bible, Cleopas, and the other doesn't even have a name. Like the announcement of Jesus' birth to the shepherds in the fields, Jesus, the risen Christ, appears in history in always surprising new ways. And the most remarkable thing about it for me is that as, as his friends walk along the road, their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And they say to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place? The Greek word for stranger is paroikes, para, like parallel or alongside with, and oikos, or house. It's like someone who is strange and different enough that they live alongside with you, but you do not completely understand who they are. And that is the way they feel about Jesus. There's something different about him, but they cannot place it. And so they tell Jesus the story of Jesus. And he opens the scriptures to them. And as they reach their destination, he seems to be going on and they invite him in to share a meal with them. And he takes bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to them. And this action, this echo of the last meal they shared together only three days before, wakes them up and they see who he really is. 
I always try to imagine this part of the story of them hurrying back, rushing through darkness along the road, so excited to tell their friends this news. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? So much happens to us almost every day that we do not recognize or understand at the time. We are more than just logical and reasoning creatures. Feeling our hearts burning within us is part of how we see what is real and what is true. Most of us have lost loved ones over the last year. And at Grace Cathedral, we have lost some extraordinary people. People, I can't even imagine the cathedral being able to continue on without them. About two weeks ago, we got the news that Clifford Moss had died. And we're going to miss him so terribly. I was named after my uncle Malcolm, who died in January. He stood about three or four inches than me and weighed about 20 pounds heavier than me. He was just the epitome of strength in my life as I was growing up. And even to his death, he seemed so strong, so much larger than life. He was English and grown up in England. And he went to college at Princeton and had a roommate who was from Hawaii who taught him how to play the ukulele and sing silly songs. He'd play Fats Waller on the piano and he'd always make us laugh and he would sing, Your kisses are worth waiting for. In his retirement, he became a photographer and every year he would give us calendars filled with his pictures. And still, every time I see a wall calendar, I think of him. But even more shocking is the loss of our friend Christina Watson. When we first met, UC Irvine was still under construction. We used to joke, that's what UCI stands for, under construction indefinitely. And my wife Heidi sat next to Christina in the movie theater across the street from campus on the first day in their first day of class, the first day in their first class together. And the two of them became such fast friends. Heidi would always refer to Christina as a girly girl and Christina would wear the most outlandish colors in her clothing and always had purple fingernails. It was almost like the whole world was a black and white movie and Christina was the only one who was in color. Christina married Tom, another one of my favorite people. He's the most extraordinary former San Diego lifeguard. He, he looks at the ocean and he reads the ocean in the way that I read theology books. And the two of them settled in happily ever after, living together in, Pebble, in Pacific Beach. And we would visit them. And each visit set, felt like a perfect Indian summer day that would last forever, that was golden. And even our children were just an addition to this wonderful magic that we shared together as friends. We became their godparents and we became theirs. We were looking forward to some good times together after our children left home. But Christina, her cancer returned. And on the anniversary of my ordination in February, she died. Why didn't the disciples recognize Jesus as he walked along with them? Were their eyes just closed by grief and sorrow and disappointment and sadness? Or did Jesus seem different? Most of all, Jesus' friends had to wake up they had to wake up to what is real. They had to realize that there is more to our experience than arguments and a logic of our religious heritage. They had to adopt a new flexibility, a new imagination, because God comes to us in ways that will always surprise us. The disciples had to learn to pray, which is another way of saying that they had to learn to see with their hearts, understanding that we are in the presence of God requires us to see in this way, to see the reality that is beyond our death. The great 
16th century poet John Donne and the dean of St. Paul's Cathedral in London writes this poem. Death, be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. In this time of social isolation and despair over what we were losing in the pandemic, who is walking alongside you unrecognized? These days, you may be feeling the presence of people like my friend Jason or my uncle Malcolm or my friend Christina or Jesus himself. Or you may not be feeling their presence. But God is so very near to us and so are the ones we love. Jesus invites us as ordinary people in ordinary places into the intimate companionship of God and all the saints. The Good Shepherd is leading us now into new ways of seeing him and of seeing each other into a deeper life together. You will see him wherever there is love present.